you standing, you can be seated this morning. Uh, just for a second, we're going to stand up again here in a second. We're in Psalm 91. Psalm 91, what a powerful, powerful passage of Scripture. What a powerful chapel, chapter in the Bible, chapter 91. Last week we preached the introduction to this series, 911. This is a stay-at-home order. If you have not watched it, I, I encourage you to watch it last week. Um, powerful word that the Lord gave last week. Today I'm going to preach um, something I'm very passionate about, and, and I just encourage you in this moment while we're getting ready. I'm going to go ahead and give you the title of the message, the subtitle of this message this morning out of the series, Abide, is simply this, I will not be afraid. I am as a conscious act of my will, based upon what I know about the scriptures that is alive for me, that is a lamp for me, that is a light for me, that is God-inspired, I choose to not be afraid. I will, an act of my will, I will not be afraid. I'm going to prove it to you in the text today. And before we get into the meat of the message this morning, I, I just want to encourage you to take this Facebook post. That if you're watching on Facebook or you're watching on YouTube, wherever you're watching, Send somebody a text, share the link, do something to somebody, send it in messenger to somebody that you know is dealing with anxiety, is dealing with fear, this, this overwhelming sense of panic or pain that is going on in their life. I want you to send this to them right now. Tag them in the comments. I don't know how it all works, but tag them. Somehow get the message to them that there's a word for them today, and it's simply this, that I will not. Be afraid. Listen, I, I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. There, uh, the believer should not live in fear. If we truly understand God and we truly understand that we are God's, if if I'm striving every day to live in the will of the Lord, then fear should be far from me. And, and, and it may all be around me, but I don't have to live in it and it live in me because I trust in the Lord that has created me and is making me and is shaping me in this situation. And, and we're in Psalm 91, and I'm going to encourage you to stand up and get out of wherever you are right now and stand up for the reading of God's Word because this Word is going to stand up for you. That's why we stand up for it. I'm expecting this word to stand up for me. That's why I'm willing to stand up for it right here and decree it in the atmosphere of my house, in the atmosphere of even for me, this house today, that, that this is the thing that, that I am declaring over my life. I'll remind you that Jewish rabbis teach Psalm 91, and they say that if you will quote Psalm 91 seven times, that faith will reside in the heart of the person who has the power and the stamina to quote Psalm 91 seven times. I don't know if you're doing it or not, but for me, I have indicators at strategic hours throughout my day, seven times a day. It's the first thing I do every morning. It's the last thing I do every night before I go to bed. And then I have five indicators, reminders throughout the day where I stop whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, and I decree and I declare Psalm 91 over my life. Not because I'm the preacher, but because I need it as a husband. I need it as a father. I need it as a leader. I need it as a, a business owner. And I know most of all, I needed just to stay saved and sane in this season of my life. Not only do the, the Jewish rabbis teach that it will, it will uh, create faith in the heart of the person who will recite it, but this is the psalm of protection and covering. How many of you today want to be protected? Now, you know, it's been long. It's been a long time since people got to talk back to me. But I want you to start talking back to me now. Give me an amen on the comment or slap yourself high five. Or I, what I prefer you to do is stand up and run around, throw a shoe at, at the, the phone or whatever you're watching this thing on. It is the, the, the chapter, the psalm of protection and covering. And I believe with all of my heart this season of corona that we're in, COVID-19 that we're in, this is as much spiritual as it is is physical so the only way I'm going to be able to come against a spiritual thing is with spiritual weapons I cannot attack a spiritual thing with physical weapons that's why God said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds and I believe that Psalm 91 is a mighty weapon in the spirit realm of protection and covering for you and for me so I want us come on in the microphones y'all help me here I want us with the microphones I want us with a, with a with a 
loud cadence and audience. I, I want you to decree Psalm 91 over your life, over your relationships, over your home, over your vehicles, that everything would walk in protective covering that God has provided for us because we've chosen to homestead, to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Come on, Psalm 91, verse number one. You ready? Let's go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Here it is. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Somebody ought to give God praise that you and I get to abide today. Thank you for your word. 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 Based upon this, Lord Jesus, we have decreed and we have determined that we will not be afraid. Come on, somebody needs to just speak it in the atmosphere. I will not be afraid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of my finances. I will not be afraid in my relationships. I will not be afraid with regards to my job. I will not be afraid in this economy. I will not be afraid of, of talking to people. I will not be afraid of being around people. I will not be afraid of taking care of my family. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. No, 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 no. No, perfect love casts out all fear. I will not be afraid. I am not going to cower. I am not going to bunker down. I am not going to get down into my bunker and hide and wait for life to move on. No, no, no. I choose to live in faith and I decide that I will not walk in fear. For perfect love casts out all fear and I've decreed and declared today that I will not be afraid. Of whom shall I fear and of what shall I be afraid of? I will not be afraid. If you got somebody close to you, slap them real good. And tell them, don't be afraid. 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 If you don't have anybody close to you, look in the mirror and tell yourself, come on, sometimes we got to preach to ourselves, I will not be afraid. The greatest sermons I ever preach are when I'm looking in the mirror. Come on, telling myself, wipe your face, cry, wipe your tears, do what you need to do, buck up, son. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. You could be seated if you're still standing. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord. Abide, abide, abide. I remind you that 
verses 2 through 16 hinge upon the, the significance of Psalm 91 verse 1, the 911, the emergency verse. This is the verse to go to in every emergency. That he who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I cannot wait to walk into abiding in the shadow of the Almighty in the next week or so. But I want you to understand. I, I, I love this statement. He says, he who dwells. Listen, that is a conscious decision that you have to make. That I am going to dwell. Last week we talked about it. That I am going to homestead. In the secret place, I, I'm going to choose, I make a conscious decision whether I'm going to choose to dwell in what the talking heads on the news media say. I'm going to choose to dwell on the understanding of what I'm reading on social media, or I'm going to choose to dwell based upon even what I see for myself. No, 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 no. I'm making a decision. If I'm going to not be afraid, I'm going to have to choose to dwell in the secret place. I'll remind you that my, my job is not to choose to abide. What I have to to do is choose to dwell. And if I will dwell in, he says that I will be under his shadow. To dwell in, to dwell means he allows me to abide and to dwell in means he allows me to remain, to abide under the shadow of his wing. Listen, that word dwell, it, it means to homestead. It means to, to focus in, to, to lock in, to come in and refuse to allow anyone to jump your claim, to take up residence and to build on the fact that you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. I'm going to homestead right here. I'm not going to homestead in vacation land. I'm not homesteading in places that I'm not going to be in. No, no, no. No, I'm homesteading in what I know is going to protect me and keep me in refuge and keep me in fortress and keep me in safety and I'm choosing to homestead and not allow any claim jumper to come in and remove any level of my peace or my joy or my trust. Uh, today I want to focus on verse number five. Verse number five. And the significance of the fact that we have to choose to not fear, which means we have the opportunity to be afraid. It's interesting that for him to say, you shall not be afraid, means I have every opportunity to become afraid. That there is fear that is all around me. There's an opportunity, an opportunity for me to homestead in fear places because fear is close to me. Listen, that word fear in, in the Hebrew is yar. It, it's yar. It means to fear, it mor to morally revere. Watch this. It means to cause to be frightened, to dread, to revere, to stand in awe of, to honor, to respect. That when I fear something, what I'm really doing is respecting it. When I fear something, what I'm doing is giving it reverential awe. What I'm saying is, is that it has the power to do something that I don't want to be done to me. That it has the power to come upon me in a way that I cannot stop. That there is a greater force inside of the thing I fear than is greater than what's on the inside of me to keep it from me. So when I fear, what I'm doing is I'm giving it reverential awe and I'm saying that it has power that I don't have and it has the ability to penetrate places that I am vulnerable in. Huh. Today there are lots, lots of things that we can fear. It, it's unbelievable these days how easy it is to become afraid. Uh, I, I, I call it the schizophrenic information we have. Our, our schizophrenic information today. It's unbelievable. And, and what I mean by that is I remember growing up that there were some foods that were good for you. And then you find out they're not good for you. And then you find out they might be good for you until somebody gets mad in the FDA and then tells you that it's not good for you anymore. <laughs> they, they, they will tell you you need to take this medication because this med is good for you. And then later on they'll find out that this med is not good for you. And then they'll tell you that the med really is good for you but it's going to cause 15,000 other things wrong with you. I remember when I was going through a season of a lot of indigestion, I had all these people gather around me and go, oh, you need to take Zantac. You need to take Zantac. And, and man, I'd be popping Zantacs like breath mints. Hallelujah. Especially all the Italians I have to eat and all the, all the spices that I get with all my Latino brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I'd be popping Zantacs like Tic Tacs, y'all. And then I find out on news media that Zantac causes cancer. So it reduces acid reflux, but it gives you cancer. 
So it was one time good for you, and now it's bad for you. And, and listen, there's so many places because we don't know which one is reality. You know, milk is good for you, and you know, cow's milk is good for you, and then we find out that, that cow's milk is not good for you, and then we find out almond milk is good for you, and then we find out almond milk is not good for you, that you need to have grapefruit milk. I don't even know if that's a such thing, but, but we... Uh, we don't know because everybody who gives us our information, they don't really know either, but they're convinced. It's opportunity to fear with what we put in our bodies. If you have children in your life that drive, you know what it's like. There's opportunity for fear every time they pull out of the parking lot. My son drives a Mustang and has a really loud muffler. And every morning when he would drive, he and, he, he and my, my daughter, to school, there is, a, there is a sense of fear that comes over me because of how dangerous it is to get out of my neighborhood to turn left. You have to go through four lanes of traffic. And there's something on the inside of me that becomes nervous and anxious every single morning because I know that in one instant, in one moment, my world could be completely changed. There's an opportunity for fear. In this season with our future, we, we, opportunity for fear. Is my 401k going to be there? Is my Roth IRA going to be there? Is the stock market ever going to turn around? Uh, it, 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 uh, it, opportunity to fear on what our financial futures are going to be, our finances. Are we ever going to get the economy back? Are we ever going to get our jobs back? Are, are we ever going to have a job to go back to? Are they going to actually send me my stimulus check? Are they actually going to give the church or the business the PPP? We don't know. You're down with PPP. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I mean, we just don't know anymore. We don't know what's going on anymore. And it's opportunity to panic and to fear. And listen, listen. And even as a pastor, I know there are so many of my congregants that are watching today. And they're a part of this service. And, 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 and you're wondering, do I pay my tithes on what I get furloughed? Do I pay my tithes on my unemployment? Or do I hoard it and trust that God's going to provide? I understand. Understand. And listen, you don't see the bottom lines. The truth of the matter is through this season, I'm not looking at the bottom lines because I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to live in panic. I don't want to come up to you and ask you to give out a need. I want you to remember everything you have as a seed for your future. And so we're walking in the harvest of what seeds we planted in our past. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We, we're walking in the harvest of the seeds we planted in the past knowing that we got to plant seeds now for what's coming in the future. But there's an opportunity to fear. Listen, here's the way I wrote it when I was getting ready for you here. While we may, uh, we may be in circumstances or around circumstances that can cause fear, watch this, God does not want us to be owned by fear. Mm. While we're in a season that can cause fear, God does not want us to be owned by that fear. It's one thing to be around fear. It's another thing to be owned by fear. Listen, this unseen enemy, this unseen enemy will make us believe that there is no threat because we cannot see it. But just because we cannot see it does not mean it doesn't exist. And, and listen, Psalm 91 verse number four, starting with verse number five, it gives us four circumstances that stirs fear all around us. There are four circumstances that Psalm 91 gives us where you and I have the propensity to become afraid and become owned by that fear that is around us. It's not to say there's not an opportunity to be afraid. It's not to say there's not something scary that is around us. It's not to say that there's not a reason that you can be afraid and the people that are in our lives that are not spiritual are afraid. And, and Psalm 91, beginning with verse number five, gives us four circumstances that you and I have to choose to not be afraid of. Number one, in Psalm 91, verse number five, he says that you shall not be afraid, watch this, of the terror by night. My God, I feel like preaching now. I'm not gonna be afraid of the terror that comes by night. That, that word terror in the Hebrews, watch this, it is a tormenting fear. In the middle of the night, and those of you that have ever gone through panic, you've ever gone through anxiety, you've ever gone through those seasons, it, it, is, it is a tormenting spirit, it's a tormenting fear. It's an exaggerated fear. It's, it's a fear that produces panic. It's, it's an overpowering fear that will paralyze you. And, and when you're supposed to be a sleep, you can't sleep. And when you're supposed to be awake, you can't stay awake because it is tormenting your mind, it's tormenting your heart, it's tormenting your relationships, and you live, watch this, easily spooked and startled. We become easily spooked. We become easily starved. We, well, like children in the middle of the night, we see shadows that aren't really there. 
that in the middle of the night, we, we, there, there is a shadow because of the light in the tree limb outside of our window. And now we're seeing shadows in our rooms and things that aren't there. And we become afraid of it because of the tormenting fear that we have on the inside of our lives. I remember as a young man, it's really jacked up parents of mine, told me that if I ever lied to them that Satan would come up at the edge of the bed and grab my toes and drag me into hell. It's jacked up childhood. Now y'all know what's wrong with me. <laughs> sort of. <clears throat> I, I got communicated that any time you sin, that, that you have the opportunity for Satan to come up and grab you by the toes and drag you into hell. I don't know if it was my parents or my grandparents. It was one of my parents. They, they would tell me that, that Satan would come up to the end of the bed and he would, he would pinch your toes. And, and if you lied really good, if you, if you sinned really bad, he'd drag you right into hell. He'd pull you right out of your bed. And then I watched Freddy Krueger, y'all. And I watched this joker show up with blades. I couldn't sleep by myself for nothing, y'all. I couldn't sleep. My older brother would have to come in. I'd climb in in the middle of the night, climb up in his bed. Every time I lied, they knew I lied because I couldn't sleep by myself. And I want you to know, most of my childhood, I couldn't sleep by myself. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Because of this overpowering fear, the ability to see shadows that aren't really there, things in my life in the night. Come on. Because, watch this, nighttime is the congenial hours of horrors. I want you to hear me. It's the congenial hours of horrors, of regrets, of worry, of stress. That most of us get stressed out in the middle of the night. Most of us find ourselves worrying in the middle of the night. Most of us find ourselves regretting things in the middle of the night. We do things during the day and we're like, oh, it'll all work out. I ain't going to worry about it. When we put our head down, isn't it interesting that that is when we have the congenial hours of our horror. What was I thinking? What was I doing? Why did I say that to her? Why did I say that to him? Why did I allow myself to go that far in my temptation? Listen, because nighttime is the congenial hours of horrors, regrets, worry, and stress. And I want you to know that if I'm dwelling in the secret place of the most high God, the good news is it doesn't matter the terror by night. It doesn't matter how tormenting that fear is. It doesn't matter how exaggerated that fear is. It doesn't matter how panic producing that fear is. It doesn't matter how overpowering that fear is. Why? Because I know in my heart of hearts I'm going to homestead in the the secret place. I, I'm going to dwell in the secret place and I will not be afraid. Psalm 4 verse 8 I will lie down and sleep in peace because you make me to dwell in safety according to Psalm 4 verse number 8 I'm going to lie down but not just lie down. I'm going to lie down and sleep in peace because I know that I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. I know that I'm being covered by His wing. That the shadows I'm seeing in my room is the shadow of the feather of the heavenly arm of the Father. And I have nothing to be afraid of and I will not be afraid. This enemy is not kicking me out of my bedroom. This enemy is not going to make me turn my nightlight on. No, I have his word and it is a lamp unto my feet. Good God. And it is a light for me in the middle of the night. Oh, God, I told you I feel like preaching this morning. Psalm 91 verse 5 says, I will not be afraid of the terror by night. But not just the terror of night, the tormenting fear of night. But number two, I will not be afraid of the arrow, of the arrow. I will not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day. I will not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day. Listen, that arrow is an indicator. Watch this. While the terror shows up at night, the arrow shows up during the day. Why? Because the enemy, what that arrow represents is that I have a foe that is out to kill me. This arrow did not magically appear somewhere. This arrow did not magically show up somewhere. No, there was a foe on the other side of that weapon that has released this thing into my life because its goal was to, is to kill me right in my heart. 
that there is an adversary that is exposed, there is a foe that is opposing me, and if they want to remain blatantly obvious to me that they are out to steal, to kill, to destroy what it is that God is trying to do in and through my life. It's one thing to have a secret assassin. It's another thing to have one exposed going, yeah, here's the arrow I'm releasing into your life. I'm going to talk about you and try to get you demoted in your job. I'm going to try to get you fired and out of here. I'm going to try to take you out. I don't like you. I can't stand you. I hope you lose. I hope you fail. I hope you don't don't succeed in any area of your life. I'm going to try to take you out of your marriage. I'm going to try to ruin your kids. I'm going to try. And they expose themselves in the daylight, letting you know that there's an enemy on the other side of that era. Mm. These cutting foes, they, they lie in ambush and they aim their deadly arrow at our hearts. But listen, we don't have to be afraid of them. We have no cause to be afraid of them. If I'm homesteading in the secret place of the Most High, I do not have to worry about the arrow that is trying to kill my heart by day. I don't have to worry about the arrow that's coming against me. Why? Because I hear Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. You ready? That listen, that no arrow that is formed against me is able to prosper and every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned that I don't have to worry about the weapon that is formed against me because I'm dwelling in the secret place of the most high God I am abiding under the shadow of his wing so they can fire every arrow they want to but thou O oh Lord are a shield for me you're my glory and the lifter of my head no weapon formed against me listen that doesn't mean weapons are not going to be formed. Weapons are going to be formed, but you got to finish the verse that that weapon that's formed against me, it shall not prosper. I will not be afraid of the arrow by day because it's formed against me that God declares that it shall not prosper in my life. Uh, the terror by night, the arrow that flies by day, number three, here it is. Uh, that, that I will not be afraid, verse six, of the, of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Uh, here we go. That I choose to not be afraid of the pestilence that here it is again that comes in the middle of the night. In other words, these things that are unseen that are destroying. Listen, this pestilence speaks to the undetectable sicknesses and disease of our day. It is unseen. It is beyond the, be, beyond the surface. It is things in our life that are absolutely contrary to what we know. We can't figure out where it comes from. We can't figure out how it got started. We don't know if it was hereditary. We don't know what's going on with it. Listen, this particular thing that I choose not to fear, according to Psalm 91 verse 6, is a representation that I must confront infections. I must confront infestations. I must confront pandemics pandemics and I must confront the epidemics and what God is saying in Psalm 91 verse number 6 is that I will not be afraid of Rona. I ain't being afraid of Rona. I'm not walking around in the fear of Rona. I'm going to use wisdom. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to keep my hands out my mouth. I'm going to come around and be around people and make sure that they ain't coughing and sneezing up on me. But listen, I'm not living in fear. I'm not going down into my basement because I don't have one, y'all. I'm not going to go down high there and buck her in and huck her down and get all my guns out and try to keep the big bag boogeyman out of my life. No, 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 no. I don't spray everybody down when they come through my house and lie saw. Listen, because I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Because I serve a God that healeth all my diseases. I remind you in Malachi verse chapter 4, verse number 2, that he is the son of righteousness with, watch this, with healing in his Wings, oh my God, he who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow. Uh, he will cover me with his feathers. The good news is those feathers have healing in them. I will not be afraid of the arrow. I will not be afraid of the terror. And I will not be afraid of Rona. Somebody ought to give God praise that he's bigger than a pandemic. Oh my God, Antoine, 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 this church would be buck wild right now. That was close. 
Uh, the terror by night, the arrow by day, the perilous pestilence in the darkness, I walk in the darkness. And then number four, watch this. I will not be afraid of the destruction that lays waste, I love this, at noonday. I am not going to be afraid of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Terror in the middle of the night, tormenting terror. The arrow that tells me there's an enemy trying to kill me. And then pestilence of these secret sicknesses, disease that I cannot see. And now he's telling me to, to know that I don't have to be afraid of the warfare, the destruction that comes at noonday. Listen, this word destruction, it speaks to natural disasters and wars. I don't have to be afraid of tornado season. Last night, we're sitting here, if you're in the Charlotte area watching, you know that we were under a tornado warning for two, almost two hours all around the area of Charlotte. Listen, I don't have to be afraid of that. I don't have to live in the fear of a natural disaster. I don't have to live in the fear of whether we're going to be in war with North Korea, whether we're going to be in a war with China, whether we're going to have atom bombs or atomic bombs that are going to be able to be shot with long-range missiles. Listen, we don't have to live in the fear of that. Yes, there may be cause to be afraid all around us, but I don't have to be owned by the fear of natural disasters. We're getting ready to move into hurricane season. And I want you to know, I don't have to be afraid of a hurricane. I don't have to be afraid of a tornado. I don't have to be afraid of what North Korea may or may not do. I don't have to be afraid of what China may or may not do. I don't have to worry about the Cold War of years gone by. No, no, I'm not looking for the Bay of Pigs or any of that stuff. Why? Because I've chosen to homestead in the shadow of the Almighty. I've chosen to go into the secret place and if they drop a bomb they won't be able to find me because I'm in the secret place. If the tornado comes they won't be able to find me because I'm in the secret place. If the hurricane comes they won't have to be afraid. They'll never find me. Those waves will never knock down the walls of my secret place. <sighs> Earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, wars. I will not fear. I will not be afraid. That doesn't mean I'm going to walk out cavalier like a maverick doing my own thing and putting myself in a position for stupidity. But that means the steps I do take are ordered by the Lord. And if God brought us to Rona, then God ordered Rona in our life in this way, in this season. He has allowed it. Corona, the COVID-19 did not come from China without first passing through the fingers of God. And I will not be afraid. Why? Because Psalm 91 verse 2 tells me that he is my refuge and my fortress. I am fortified. I am in refuge with him because I've decided that I am going to homestead in the secret place. And for me to dwell is for me to abide. And for me to dwell in is for me to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is my refuge and my fortress. Listen to me. Listen to me. Psalm 91. Go ahead, Antoine. Psalm 91 verse 7. Huh. A thousand may fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand. Come here, Vince. Hurry. Miles, come here. Joey, come here. Joshua, come here. Peyton, come here. Come over here. Try to remain socially distanced appropriately. But I want you to lay down. Lay on this side. On this side. My love. Lay down over here. Just die. I just want you to die. Listen. A thousand may fall at my side, and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not get close to me. 
Can you imagine standing and there is death all around you? But I can stand alive and not be afraid because death may be here and death may be there, but death cannot get to the secret place. See, <clears throat> we're all on the stage together. But one of us is in the secret place while he's on the stage. I've chosen to be on the stage too. But before I ever got on the stage, I determined that the stage would become part of the secret place. And I will dwell here in spite of what's happening to my left and in spite of what's happening to my right a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand but it will not draw nigh to me there is death all around me. There are arrows flying everywhere. There is tormenting fear everywhere. There is perilous pestilence in the darkness everywhere. There is destruction right here at noonday. But I will not be afraid of what is around me because I know who is sheltering me. I will not be afraid. Thank you, gentlemen. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of torment and fear. I will not be afraid of enemies and their weapons that they formed against me. I will not be afraid of unseen sicknesses and disease. And I will not be afraid of natural disasters and wars that are killing things all around me. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but I will not be afraid. Yes. I will not be afraid. Yesterday morning, I, I came back to the office and the Lord was speaking to me about this passage. Here's what he showed me. Get ready because this is a preach. In Psalm 91, verse 5 and 6, notice what he does. He says, I'll not be afraid of the terror at night and then the arrow at day. The pestilence and darkness, night, are the destruction at day. It's interesting that he starts with the night and then goes to the day. He starts with the night and then goes to the day. Now, we understand that it is morning and then evening, and that produces our day. But here he is saying it's evening and morning evening and morning it's evening and morning oh god i know where i'm going it's evening and then morning it's evening and then morning we live morning and then evening morning and then evening see we understand that day comes and then night comes but god understands that night comes and then this is out of order to us oh my god but this is completely in order to him. Because watch this, it speaks all the way back to creation. Oh God. In Genesis chapter one, verse number five, the Bible says that he called the light day and he called the darkness he called night. Watch this. So the evening and the morning were the first. The first day was not day and then night. Do you hear what I'm saying? The, the, the evening and the morning was the first day of God doing something. God started something when he brought the evening to the morning. 
He didn't start something when he brought the morning to the evening. Y'all don't hear what I, God have mercy. But when he brings the evening to the morning, you know that God is creating something new. He's creating something new when he brings the evening to the morning, not the morning to the evening. See, it's normal when the evening, the morning comes to the evening, but it's God doing something new when he'll bring the evening to the morning. And in creation, he created the evening and then the morning and called that the first day. In other words, I created something new when I bring you to the night before I bring you to the day. What are you saying? I'm saying that when you have the terror at night and then you get the arrow by day, when you get the pestilence at night and then you get the destruction at day, it is not an indicator that something bad is happening. It's an indicator that God is about to do something new. That you and I are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm here today to tell somebody in this place that God is birthing something Oh God, that's why he said, you ready? That's why he said, weeping may endure for a, but joy, joy comes in the morning. He turns our mourning into dancing. He takes our ashes and makes them beautiful. He bursts something new when he brings you to the dark place first. Somebody lift up their hands and thank God for the new day that's dawning. Somebody thank God for the new day that God's doing something new, y'all. The reason I'm not afraid is because God's doing something new, y'all. Behold, I do a new thing. I hear the Lord saying, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new. I brought you to the night to let you know that the alarm is about to sound and the sun of righteousness is about to rise with healing in his wings. I'm doing something new. <laughs> Slip up your hands right there and just thank God for the new day. <laughs> Ooh, we thank you for the new day. 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 Come on, jump up on your feet all over the room. All over, all over the house. Jump up on your feet, jump up on your feet, jump up on your feet. Every place God begins with night, he then turns it into day. It is an indicator he's about to break something into the new. The Lord spoke to me yesterday morning. I had to come back to the office. I heard Holy Spirit say, he said this, he said, Tell my people, I'm in a turning it around mood. <laughs> he said, I'm in a turning it around mood. I'm about to turn this thing around. I'm, in a, I'm about to turn your sadness into joy. I'm about to turn your mourning into dancing. I'm about to turn your ashes into beauty. I'm in a turning it around kind of mood. It may be out of your order, but the Holy Spirit said it's not out of mine. So Holy Spirit, we yield to you. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. I got you standing because it's how we started this conversation. And it's how we're going to start our worship. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, I feel the Holy Ghost, and under his wings you shall take refuge. This is next Sunday. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Here it is. 
You shall not be afraid. Somebody say that with me. I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not draw nigh unto me. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for his a he will give his charge his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands the angels hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot watch this because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high and I will because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. Show him my salvation. I will not be afraid. Psalm 91 is to be lived, not learned. It is to be rested in, not just recited. I will not be afraid. Not because I'm strong enough, but because I'm a homesteady in the secret place. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to spread your wings come on and I want us to mount up and rise above the terror the arrows the pestilence the destruction come on we're asking for the wind of the spirit to allow us to elevate beyond where we are yet still remain under the shadow of his wing Come on, if your hands are lifted right now, I want your mouth to match your hands. And I want you to just worship because you're homesteading. We get to abide. We get to abide. We get to abide. He abides. He abides. Hallelujah. He abides. And so do we. Come on, I dare you to worship. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to worship. I dare you to homestead. I will not be afraid. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear the Lord saying somebody needs to open up their back door and tell fear they ha it has to leave right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody's been living in worry. You've been living in panic. You've been living in anxiety. And I heard the Lord tell me you need to go open your back door and tell fear it has been evicted out of your homestead. Let other... Let all the other names fade away. Hey, let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your away. Jesus, take your away. Say it again. Let all the other names. Let all the other names. Yeah,
I'm on our Judah Church prayer wall. The app, our Judah Church app on the prayer wall. Father, right now we, we lay, lay pearl before you. We lay this cousin Jake and his wife before you. We pray, Lord, for this boss right now. We pray, Lord, for this, this person in New York. We pray, Lord, right now for this father-in-law. We pray, Lord, for this close friend that had a miscarriage. We pray, Lord, right now for this dad. We pray, Lord, right now for uh, Grandma Reese. We pray, Lord, right now for this nephew. We pray right now for this husband's business. We pray right now for this daughter, Elise. We pray right now for this uh, person battling COVID-19 in South Africa. We pray for the Carroll family right now. We pray, Lord, for this brother-in-law named Dave. We pray, Lord, for this aunt named Nina. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that they would homestead in the secret place. I, I pray, Lord, that according to your will, we will not be afraid of the terror by night, the arrow by day, the pestilence in darkness, or the destruction at noonday. We ask for your sovereign hand to go and be extended. Send your ministering angels right there to the north, the south, the east, and the west, where they are, oh God. And let your power be revealed in their lives. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Let Corona, the name of Corona, fade away. Let the name of wars and rumors of wars fade away. Let the name of diabetes fade away. Let the name of leukemia fade away. Let the name of unemployment fade away. Let the name of poverty fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Let the name of sexual addictions fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Let anxiety and fear fade away. Until there's only until there's only say all the other names fade away. Until until there's only the only other names fade away. Until until there's only the only other names fade away. Until until there's only the only other names fade away. Until until there's only the only other names fade away. They gotta go until until. There's only say until there's only whatever name is trying to get into your house, whatever claim jumper. Until there's only you. I prophesy a cease and desist order. Until there's only you. We serve an eviction notice on your adversary at your home today. Until there's only you. Like milk. We pray that the expiration date has now come to fruition. And that they have to be removed in the name of the Father. And in the freedom that comes from the Son and the power of His Holy Spirit. We decree this thing and we know it is established in the heavenlies. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Jesus, take a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. 
I will not be afraid. Somebody needs to say it one more time. I will not be afraid. It is an act of my will. So you know what I'm going to do in this day? This new day? <laughs> if he brings the night to the morning to create something new, I hear the Lord saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will not be afraid, but I will rejoice. And be glad. We be throwing babies right here. And I hope you, if you got a baby, I hope you sling it, at least on the bed. Just throw it on the bed for me. Just throw it on the bed. If you got a shoe, just sling it on the, sling it at the couch. Hit your dog with it, hallelujah. Lay hands on a caterpillar. Come on, I'm telling you, I will not be afraid. <laughs> I will not be afraid. Do you, we will be throwing babies today. You're throwing babies today. I will not be afraid. Hey, I love you today. Deuteronomy 111. May the Lord God of your fathers increase you a thousand times more and fulfill every promise that he has given you. Hey, one of the promises is that you don't have to be afraid of the terror by night, the arrow by day, the pestilence and darkness, or the destruction that lays waste at noonday. That is one of your promises that he will fulfill in your life because you're homesteading in the secret place. I love you today. Hey, our best days are not behind us. This new day has come. And the best is yet to come. I love you. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. Have an incredible rest of the week. Don't be afraid. We'll talk to you soon.